Dear friends, I greet you in Jesus' name and it is a great joy that I could talk to you once again and the topic that I chosen for this day is the dynamics of praying in the Holy Spirit. The dynamics of praying in the Holy Spirit. I want to base my uh, lesson today on Jude 20 to 23. Build up yourselves in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. But do you beloved, building yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And on some have compassion, making a distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of fire, hating even the garments defiled by the flesh. So dear friends, I want to just place before you a few points on the dynamics of praying in the Holy Spirit. A few points that I want to place and before that by way of introduction, I want to just draw out a few points that Jude writes in his epistle. Verses 1 and 2, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. Jude, the servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. This Jude that who has written this epistle, it is said that he is the half-brother of Jesus. Some scholars differ and they say that he was son of Alphaeus and Mary. I would rather say that he was half-brother of the Lord Jesus Christ and brother of James who wrote the epistle of James. Now dear friends, his brothers therefore, you know, we read in the scriptures that when Jesus was with his half-brothers, their own brother said, depart from me. Depart from here and go into Judea, that your disciples also may see the works that you are doing. For no one does anything in secret, while he himself seeks to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For even his brothers did not believe in him. This is what we read in John's Gospel, 7th chapter, verses 3 to 5. So Jude, like James, his brother, they were half-brothers of Jesus Christ. They themselves did not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. But I believe that after Jesus' death and resurrection and ascension, Jude would have got the revelation from the Lord and he did not want to call himself brother or half-brother of Jesus Christ. He is a servant of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, once Jesus is glorified, he is he's looked at in a different vantage point. Even St. Paul in his uh, letter, he says, we knew Jesus Christ in the flesh, but we have not known anybody in the flesh anymore. When Jesus is glorified, we can't talk about Jesus in the flesh more. When we come to Jesus Christ who risen again, we can't be dwelling upon his life in this world, in the physical side alone. We must be careful to look at him as a glorified savior. So Jude is not willing to look at Jesus Christ as his brother. That, that affliction he did not want to bring. He looks at Jesus as the glorified father, glorified savior, and also he looks at him as the risen Lord. Now, Jude writes in his epistle, Beloved, while I was very diligent to write to you concerning our common salvation, I found it necessary to write to you, exhorting you to contend earnestly for the faith which was once for all delivered, delivered to the saints. Dear friend, here Jude is advising the church to contend for the faith that is once delivered to the saints. What did he mean by that? Faith here speaks about the, the whole word of God that was given the Old Testament as well as New Testament that speaks about the Lord Jesus Christ. So it speaks about the whole corpus of God's word. And here he says, content for the faith that is once delivered to the saints. Many people feel faith is very simple. Yeah, you just believe on God, that is enough. No, faith has a deeper dimension. Now here he says, content for the faith because you cannot easily take faith. Why we should content for faith? He gives a few reasons. Because ungodly men had come into the, because ungodly, arrogant men had come into the forum. Now, these have crept into the Christian world, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness, unbridled lust, excess, licentiousness, wantonness, outrageousness, shamelessness, insolence. Now, dear friends, this is what Judah was able to identify in the Christian world. The grace of God is changed into lasciviousness. Now, dear friends, I tell you, even in Christian ministry nowadays, People are not careful to hold on to the right values that God has taught us. That God has taught us. Now, when people had been delivered from the bondage of Egypt, as they were moving towards Canaan, the word of God says, God destroyed those who had no faith and who sinned. 
I tell you, faith is something more deeper than simple acknowledgement of the truth. So we must be able to contend for the faith because ungodly arrogant men had gone into the fray. So this is what is happening in this world and these people are called by Jude as filthy dreamers who defile the flesh, despise authorities, speak, speak evil of dignitaries. Now Jude speaks about the negative side of these people and they were like people of Sodom and Gomorrah. They corrupt themselves with the knowledge that they have gathered. I tell you in this postmodern times we have access for many knowledge in the television, in the newspapers and also in the um, net everywhere knowledge gathering is possible. But we must understand the knowledge that we gather should be able to build our life not destroy it. Here these people they corrupt themselves with the knowledge they have gathered. The knowledge you gather from the world will corrupt you. We must understand that. Brute beasts, raging waves of the sea, foaming out of out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. I tell you these days there are many false prophets and false preachers who come under this category. They try to preach things that are of no value. Say for example one person was preaching. If there is a prostitute in a particular place, if she comes to know God, she can continue to do prostitution. This is what many people speak about, turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. They speak about hyper grace. Any sin that you commit, grace is enough. When Jesus Christ came into this world, John says, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was God, the Word was with God, the Word became flesh, dwelt amongst us, full of grace and truth. Grace and truth has been united in Jesus Christ. Nobody can separate it. When we talk about grace, yes, grace is there. God's grace is sufficient. The grace of Jesus is sufficient. We must also understand truth is there. Nowhere in the Bible do we read that after salvation, or so-called salvation, a person a person can continue to do sin, continue to do the same thing that was being done before. St. Paul says, if a person be in Christ, is a new creation, all things are passed away, all things have become new. Some people do not understand these words. So the word of God says, they have been turning the grace of God into lasciviousness, into evil. We must be careful. So we have to contend for the faith because of people like this who try to speak spurious gospel, they don't uh, cater to the right gospel. St. Paul speaks about sound doctrine, a balanced doctrine. We must learn to look at the Old Testament through the New Testament and also look at the whole Bible with the help of the Holy Spirit. There is no revelation beyond the Word of God. Some people say, I am anointed, anointed by the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit told me they say certain things against the Word of God. One preacher was telling, it is not written in the Bible anywhere that you should not fall in love. Okay? And he says, come on youngsters, you can fall in love. Bible also is not telling this particular dictum, you should not commit suicide. So can we commit suicide? So we had to understand the whole concept of God's word and lead people in the right direction. So dear friends, there are many who are turning the grace of God into lasciviousness. So we must contend for the faith and also because of fallen angels. And the angels who did not keep their proper domain, but left their own abode, he has reserved them in everlasting chains under darkness for the judgment of the great day. Now the question is, God had bound all the demonic powers in chains of darkness. The question is, did they come out? How did they come out? Can they come out? When God binds them, nobody can bring them out. When Jesus Christ came into the world, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. So the whole world is in the sway of the evil one. But when we walk in the light of God, evil powers will not come. But what happens is, when people, believers who are supposed to be walking in the truth, when they poke their fingers into the bars of the chains of darkness, they get caught. We cannot blame the devil. We cannot blame God. God has shown us the right way. We must avoid these things. So because of fallen angels, we have to contend for the faith, not spurious gospel, not uh, hyper grace, not wrong doctrines. We must be careful to contend for the faith. Then the third point is because of mystery of iniquity. Usually we are not able to understand the dynamics of evil. St. Paul calls it mystery of iniquity. 
St. Paul explains, the mystery of iniquity is already at work, the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they may be saved. And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they will believe a lie. I tell you friends, when we are not able to understand the word of God, sound doctrine of God's word, study the word of God, we will easily be deceived by false prophets. So the mystery of iniquity is already work and St. Paul writes that people are deceiving one another, deceiving others because they are not able to hold on to the truth and the love of God. They are not able to hold on to the truth and love of God, truth, love for the truth of God. So God has given to them over to reprobate mind. God has given to them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So dear friends, many people are fascinated by seeing a particular miracle. Yes, God's word is there to perform miracles. The Holy Spirit is there to perform miracles. But there is always a possibility of evil spirits performing miracles. Satan can also perform false miracles. Something supernatural, people go after it. At the same time, they do not understand the word of God. So here Jude exhorts, so content for the faith because of these things, because people are there who are not able to understand God's word properly. They teach wrong things and also the mystery of iniquity is at work. What is iniquity? Iniquity means living without a law, contempt and violation of the law and also wickedness. Now God has laid down holy laws for the betterment of man. But when people are not willing to follow them, they go into the iniquity, go into the, they get caught by the iniquity. What is mystery? Mystery in Greek is mysterion. That means something that is hidden. Only people are really coming to know the truth will understand. Usually people do not understand the mystery of iniquity. So they look at other people and say, well, what is wrong in doing this? Now, dear friends, I tell you, Satan will never go down the street and say, look here, guys, I am Satan. No, he hides behind lies. And because of that, there are some theologians who say evil spirits are not there. Demons are not there. What type of gospel can such people preach? So people are willing to listen to sugar-coated lies rather than bitter truth. When people follow sugar-coated lies, they land in hell. People who follow truth will be saved. So this is why even some saved people begin to ask questions. What is wrong in that? What is wrong in that? So some people say, what is wrong in watching movies, serials? It is all for the entertainment, you know. What is wrong in falling in love? Just playing around. Anyhow, we are going to marry. What is wrong in falling in love? What is wrong in, what is wrong in uh, looking at pornography? We are not doing anything. We are just looking. What is wrong in having social drink? I can stop any time. This, this is what people begin to ask. What is wrong in having extramarital sex? Well, my wife is sick and I'm not able to perform. So what is wrong in, uh, for me in going to have another relationship? What is wrong in cohabiting and also having a boyfriend, a girlfriend? What is wrong um, in doing such things? Well, before marriage, I can just wash my face and say, I'm all right. This is what many people speak about. I tell you, friends, when you speak lies, you are opening the door for the devil. Many people consider lies as not big sin. They don't consider it as a big sin. What is wrong in earning money by speaking lies? I tell you friends, this is happening in the lives of many people because they do not know the mystery of iniquity. Iniquity is hidden. It appears very, very glittering outside. People do not know what they are doing. We must be careful to understand these points and keep us away from being spiritually blind. Okay. Mystery of iniquity is very important, we have to understand. So, because of these things, Jude exhorts you content for the faith. Faith will not come automatically. Study the word of God, pray very much and content for the faith. Because when a person is not willing to hold on to the love for the truth, God himself shall send strong delusion that they will believe a lie. So, content for the faith. So, but you beloved, remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. Remember the words of the apostles. The New Testament, where we read the, the Word of God, is very important. Study the Word of God. Study to show yourself a prudent to God, a workman who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of God. When this is happening, you would know where you are. Jude exhorts, 
in uh, verses 17 and 19. But you, beloved, remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that, were, that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. These are sensual persons who cause divisions not having the spirit. Sensual persons. Sensations are there sensual persons, but they are not having the truth. We are to be careful to avoid this type of teaching. Now, dear friends, so he says, but you, my beloved, and he gives a few precepts so that we can pray in the Holy Spirit. Verses 20 and 23, build up yourself in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit. Precept 1, we have to pray in the Holy Spirit, rooting ourselves in the Word of God. Build upon, lay the foundation on Jesus Christ. Build your life on Him, Jesus, the object of faith. The whole Word of God speaks about Jesus Christ. We have to build our life on Him. Meditate on God's Word. That This enhances your faith. But knowledge alone will not work. We have to have the, have the Holy Spirit. Knowledge alone will not help. You have to have the presence of the Holy Spirit. You should have the indwelling Holy Spirit in you. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. Be filled by the Holy Spirit. When St. Paul says, be not drunk with wine, but be filled by the Holy Spirit, it is a precept, it is a command to do something with continuous and repeated action. Be filled daily. Be filled today. Be filled tomorrow. Be filled by the Holy Spirit on a daily basis. So, when you are able to root yourself in the Word of God, the second precept is, keep yourself in the love of God. Jesus said, if a person loves me, he'll obey my words. My father will love him and we will come and make our abode with him. So when we know the truth of God, love the truth of God, then we'll be able to keep ourselves in the love of God. In the love of God. So this is very important that we are to follow. And also we must be taught by the anointing. John in his uh, Epistle writes, 1 John 2, 27, he says, The anointing which you have received of the Lord abides in you. If you receive, receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, if the anointing is there, it abides in you. You need not be told by somebody else what to do, what not to do. The anointing teaches you all things. As the anointing teaches you, abide in Christ. That is very important. So when we are able to know the truth of God, obey the truth of God, anointing will be able to guide you as to what you should do in this world. The precept 3 that he places before us is, look for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ and the eternal life. Now, when we have the truth of God, we pray by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can help us to pray based upon the truth of God. This is very important how we have to pray in the Holy Spirit. This is very important that we should understand these precepts. So, dear friends, look for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ from, it, from eternal life. When we are able to root ourselves in the word of God and pray by the Holy Spirit, prompted by the Holy Spirit, who is able to pray with groanings that cannot be uttered, we will be waiting for the Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Our hearts will be bent upon the heavenly things. Though we are to perform God's duty here in this world, we will be longing to be with Christ continuously. We can enter into eternal life only when we have the grace of God. Only because of the grace of God. Not our work, though we have to work. Not our righteousness, though we have to be righteous. It's only because of the grace of God that we will be able to go into the things of... We will be able to go into eternal life. So, dear friends, look for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Precept 4 that he gives to us is, Be merciful to those who cannot make up their mind who are doubting. See, there are people who are doubting the word of God. They are not able to make their mind, make up their mind to follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And on some having compassion, making a distinction, but others say with fear, pulling them out of fire, hating even the garments defiled by the flesh. I tell you friends, there are many people who are not able to walk in the right path. How to bring them into, into the kingdom of God? Be merciful to those who cannot make up their mind. Sit with them, talk to them, show them love, continue to pray for such people, bring them to Christ. God can grant us his own grace to bring such people into the kingdom of God. So dear friend, how many of you are longing for the salvation of souls? I remember one brother telling me that he had burden for another young man. So he used to invite him to come to a meeting. Once he invited, twice he invited. Believe it or not, he was inviting that particular young man to come and hear God's word 59 times. 
and he refused to come. This young man was a little discouraged. This believer was discouraged. He went to another man of God and said, Brother, I have been trying to invite this man to come and hear God's word for 59 times. The other man of God said, senior man of God said, Go and call him once more. Sixtieth time when he went to call him, he was able to come and hear God's word. His life was changed. So dear friends, there are people who are blind, who are not able to make up their mind. We must be able to win souls for the Lord. When Jesus came into my heart 48 years ago, he poured into my heart a desire to seek for souls, talk to souls about the Lord Jesus Christ. So every day when I was at home before I, before I came for God's word, every day after much prayer, I used to go out in the evening, look for boys, look for men to whom I can talk to about God. One day when I was walking on the road, there came a boy. I took out of his hands and spoke to him, began to talk to him about Jesus. His name was Babu. And uh, as I was talking to him, another young man came and pulled him away. Well, it's at the roadside, I didn't want to run after this boy. So he went away. I prayed for that young, ba young man at night. The next morning I came. Next day I came. I went to a small shop where this young boy was. And I asked him, where is Babu? And the face of this man began to shrink. And he said, Babu died last night. I was very sad. We have to reach out to people. The life is very transient, temporary, and that passes away. We have to long for people. We have to bring people into Jesus Christ. So, dear friends, you must have burden for souls. When you long for God's kingdom, when you have the power of the Holy Spirit, when you know the truth of God, when you bank yourself on the truth of God, you will be able to pray in the Holy Spirit. So, Jude says, you beloved, build yourself on most holy faith, the word of God and then pray in the Holy Spirit, and then you'll be able to do great things for God. Now, as doxology, he says, Now unto him who is able to keep you from falling, to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. I tell you, friends, God is able to keep us from falling. We are to follow these precepts. Be rooted and grounded in God's word and pray in the Holy Spirit. Expect the grace of God to reach out to heaven. Meanwhile, you try to save souls, even hating the garments spotted by the flesh. When we try to help souls, when we receive confession from sinners, confession from people who are coming closer to God, we also might be tempted. So St. Paul says, when you try to help others, you be cautious about yourself. So this is what God wants us to do being rooted and grounded in the truth of God, praying in the Holy Spirit, expect the grace of God to reach out to eternal life when Jesus comes back. And also, meanwhile, try to bring souls into the kingdom of God. When we do these things, the, the blessing is, now unto him who is able to keep you from falling. Many people fall down. But here God says, the word of God says, he is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of God with exceeding joy. So this is what Jesus wants to do. He wants to cleanse us. He wants to make us whole so that we will stand before God. And it's a great joy for God. Should we not be careful? So what are we going to do? Content for the faith that is once delivered to the saints. And to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Sometimes, you know, when people are not able to understand God, because the Holy Spirit is not in them, they are not able to know the power of the Holy Spirit. They are not able to understand God, the Savior of, of mankind, the, for Him glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore. All things are under His control. All things are under His control. We need not be scared. He is able to keep you from falling. Well, you may stumble and fall, but the Lord is able to restore you. What is needed is humble yourself, content for the faith, and then a day is going to come, you'll enter into glory. I know a lady, a, a, very, a sister, her name was Betty Lou Mills. She is from USA. Years back, I used to hear her song in a particular organization, particular ministry, and one day she told about a small incident that happened in her life. When she was in the U.S. in her house, a particular man of God was coming to the city to preach God's word. After the preaching of God's word, he was expected to come home to have dinner with her, with this family. And uh, he was expected around 8.30. And around 7.30, she had a vision. In that vision, 
she saw a beautiful red carpet and on both sides people were there, angels were there telling, well done, well done. And she saw, she also was in the crowd, she saw a Jesus and a person walk along. And when they came near her, she saw that the, the, the person was the man of God who was expected to come and have dinner with them. And she did not understand what was happening. And they just passed her, entered into heaven. And the vision was gone. Immediately the phone rang. When she took the phone, she understood that the man of God was preaching. After the preaching was over, he gave the benediction, fell down and died. He completed his work. He entered into joy. And the angels were able to say, well done, enter in the joy of the Lord. Dear friends, there is a day of culmination going to come. We are to stand before God one day. What are we going to do? The time that God has given to us is very important. We do not have much of time to waste. So it is imperative that we root ourselves in the truth of God, praying in the Holy Spirit. We expect the grace of God to reach eternal life. And also meanwhile, try to gather people and bring them into the kingdom of God. May the Lord bless you with these words. Shall we look to God in prayer? Loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, and praise you for this time of meditation of your word. We could understand the dynamics of praying in the Holy Spirit. We thought the word of God. We thought being rooted in the word of God. We cannot pray in the Holy Spirit. I pray for all these dear brothers and sisters, dear friends who heard your word. Let them have grace from thee, O Lord, so that they will be rooted and grounded in God's word and would be able to pray in the Holy Spirit, having hope of eternal life and also bring other people into the kingdom of God. Thank you, Lord, and praise you for the doxology that says, you are able to keep us from falling and present us blameless, beautiful, perfect in the presence of God with great joy. I give you all the glory, O Lord. Help me to have the joy in serving you. In Jesus' almighty name I pray. Dear friends, the Lord bless you this day and every day to come.